Ever since Project Brazil, a demo version of New California came out, I've been looking forward to its full release. And now, after 5 more years in development, 7 in total, it is finally here. In today's review, I will be taking a look at its story, gameplay, world, companions, bugs and performance, mentioning both good and bad things about them. So now, without any further delays, let's begin. New California's story starts off in Vault 18, where you, a kid found in the wasteland and raised here, need to decide if you either want to tackle or dodge Johnny during football game. This is where your story branches out for first time, with many more decisions like this one to come, and this storyline with tons of different choices and outcomes is one of the biggest strengths of New California. After you leave Vault 18 and escape into wilderness, you can once again decide if you want to join NCR, Enclave, Raiders or even Super Mutants. Choosing your faction will then give you different quests and companions, you're gonna meet new characters that you can't talk to otherwise, making it possible to do two or three different playthroughs. You, as a part of your chosen faction, try to help them take over the wasteland. NCR wants to expand its territories, Raiders want to stay independent, Enclave has its own agenda and Super Mutants just want to destroy everything. When it comes to story itself, it starts off strong in Vault 18, but loses steam as you leave it, and there are some twists and story elements that I was not a fan of. Now in order to talk about them, I'm gonna be spoiling the whole storyline, so if you want to experience it for yourself, you can skip ahead. Spoilers starting in 3, 2, 1. Towards the end you find out that your character is some sort of super mutant hybrid created from protagonist of Fallout 1 and that you were also infected by some weird pre-war virus that made you stronger. I probably butchered that up because I didn't understand half the stuff I was told in the last hour of math and I didn't like this twist either. I would have preferred if my character was just a regular vault survivor that got caught up in this mess and not a special chosen one created by Master Wannabe. But that was not all and in the ending slideshow, Matt drops another bomb. You're actually playing as a courier and this Matt is a direct prequel to New Vegas. I felt like this reveal was forced and there was no reason for it whatsoever. I understand that Matters wanted to tie New California into New Vegas, but I don't think this was the way to do it and it would have been better if New California stayed as an independent story. However, it is their decision that they probably won't change and I respect that, but like I said, I didn't like it. I was also very confused by this Project Brazil side of story. I probably missed quite a few terminals or something, because even though this virus played an important part in the end, I didn't understand it at all. One more problem I had was with this Anai character, who seemed important at start, but since I didn't manage to take her with me to Fort Dagger Point due to failed speed check, she disappeared on the final confrontation with Brax, and I didn't understand her whole point in this journey. Maybe she can be seen more in different playthroughs, but still, if you want to make a character this important to the story, you should force her to appear in more than one scene. Other than that, I enjoyed the rest of the story, it flowed nicely, and I liked characters that I met, especially General Silverman, sleazy Senator Duwill, and Els Dragon, who was a good villain for a huge part of Mod. Dialogue wasn't bad either, although sometimes I would have preferred to have few more options, a lot of times you can only pick one that you might not agree with. But like I said, overall I really enjoyed the story of New California, except for those few final twists at the end. Now let's take a look at gameplay. New California can be split into two parts, first one happens in Vault 18, where you mainly explore and talk to people. You can take on a few side quests that let you understand side characters a bit better, you can talk to them about their past, motivations or general thoughts, and many of them can become your companions. You can take a deeper look into Vault's secret areas and spend maybe 2-3 to three hours just discovering everything. Second part, that starts in Wasteland, is almost non-stop action, with few calm scenes in between. You're gonna face raiders in a climatic battle for highway bridge, assault huge force with tons of combatants on both sides, or defend power plant from waves of enemies. There are certainly lots of different scenarios to take on, with combat that gets more difficult as you progress. Personally, I felt like there were too many action scenes after you leave Vault, and first time you're allowed to breathe and think about all that happened is after your arrival in Union City, which will take you a few hours. For me, this progression from calm Vault into action-packed wasteland was a bit shocking, but if that was the intention of martyrs, then they did a good job. 
I also felt like final confrontation and battle before it were a bit too hard and personally I switched to easy difficulty just to see the ending, but some people might enjoy additional challenge. Other than shooting, you can also talk to other characters in Union City or Tribe Village and get side quests from them as well. For example, one makes you a caravan protector that rewards you with new weapons that you can buy in shops. Another feature that played a huge part were speech checks. Failing or succeeding in one of them could mean a different outcome to quest or change your relationship with companion, so focusing on certain parts of special skills can be beneficial or disastrous for you, and I really like that. In between all these things, you can also just walk around the Black Beer Mountain and that takes me to world itself. World 18 is absolutely beautiful. Its atrium that serves as a lobby of sort has been reworked since Project Brazil and now it truly feels like a center of world's life, with kids running around, security guards and many important characters. Other parts like security and apartments are pretty similar to their alpha version when it comes to layout, but their visual has changed and now they use tons of custom textures and models that look very good. Same can be said about the whole vault, aesthetically it looks a lot different than it used to and it is clear that a lot of work went into creating it. When it comes to Wasteland, I feel like it is not completed yet. Key story locations like Raider's Mine, Union City or Fort Dagger Point looked great, they have unique visuals that make them stand out and same can be said about their design that is top notch, but that however can't be said about the rest of locations. Even though Blackbeard Mountain is a huge world space, it is very empty with only few places to discover and they don't offer much in terms of exploration or side quests. Most of the time you will be traveling through wasteland from one quest marker to another with rare distractions along the way. Some are pretty cool though, like town of people that scrap metal for living or raider training grounds. Thankfully, from what I read, martyrs are working on filling the world with quests created by other contributors. But at the moment it can't be compared to New Vegas and its complexity, but I admit that it has a lot of potential and with some additional work it can grow to stand alongside Mojave Wasteland. Let's move on to companions. You can meet all of them in Vault 18 and they include 6 humans and couple of robots that will join you depending on your choice of warrior or nerd pet in the beginning. You have Jen, one of few original kids born in Vault 18 that wants to become a Wasteland Scout just like her dad and cares a lot about her family. Jamie and Eric, brother and sister, that are in a relationship and it is up to you to either help them out or discourage them from it. Then you have Ben, a tribe kid just like you, who likes comic books and drawing them, with amnesia on top. Johnny, a guy you either dodge or tackle at the beginning with drug problems and depending on your actions he can join you or try to kill you. And finally we have Kira, the edgiest kid in the vault who hates everyone and everything and even tries to kill Jen without any explanation. But of course she has pink hair so the edge is understandable. Anyway, you can recruit, talk and even complete a few side quests for these characters, but only in the vault. Once you step outside, other than Ben and Kira, all other characters become meat shields and pack mules. They do say a thing or two sometimes, but overall their character arc and development is non-existent. Kira and Ben, who by the way also turns into warrior of darkness outside, are only ones that have unique dialogue and contribute to story. Again, companion quests are another thing that authors are working on, but currently they are not in game and so I have to mention them. And I think that those quests might be interesting, since you have a really fucked up bunch here. Two edgelords, incestuous brother and sister, drug addict and Jen, who is only normal one. But I'm sure martyrs can cook something up to make her weird just like the rest of the crew. But overall, I did like them, I'm just hoping they get fleshed out in future updates. Another important aspect is performance and bugs. By the time I release this video, it is very possible that most of these have already been fixed, since the team has been working on new updates constantly. I personally didn't notice any game breaking bugs and I was able to finish main storyline of NCR and Raiders without any problems. Only quest I couldn't finish was one where I had to protect caravans from Raiders. Its fourth part wasn't working for me, but other than that I surprisingly didn't notice anything, which is a huge success for mod of this size. But its performance was not that great. I do admit that I played it on my laptop and I also used quite a lot of graphic mods, so that might be wide lagged. But from what I read, I was not the only one with performance problems. Mod stutters a lot in Atrium, especially during combat, and even though big battles are cool to look at, they eat up a lot of FPS as well. I especially had problems during bridge battle and raider's mine firefight. 
outside of these when I was fighting in Wasteland, I didn't notice anything and it was all running smoothly. Game also crashed after I fast traveled a few times in one session and I also experienced few random crashes during my playtime. Again, these issues are most likely resolved by the time you're watching this video, so don't worry too much, as long as you can run vanilla New Vegas at 60 FPS, you should be fine. Also, make sure you follow installation guides on mod page, install 4GB patcher and don't use any mods that are not compatible. Now there aren't many and you can use almost any mod you want, but still, be careful and make sure you read the list before you start complaining about it not working. As a side note, it took me around 12 hours to finish it, so if you take multiple pads into consideration, this mod could easily occupy you for at least 20 hours. Even though it may seem like I was a bit harsh, I really did enjoy New California. I respect all the work matters put into it, 7 years of development is a lot, and many other developers would have just given up and never finished it. But that doesn't mean I can't criticize it for its mistakes and flaws. Do I think you should play it? Definitely. It is one of best mods for Fallout New Vegas out there, with long story, branching paths, good dialogue system, epic battles and interesting characters, but it fails to expand companions beyond Vault 18, has an empty wasteland, almost no side quests, some performance issues and I personally didn't like story conclusion. Some of these things can be fixed and some not, so I will give Fallout New California a strong 8 out of 10 that can be bumped to 9 once they fix performance problems and other things I talked about, but I still think everyone should play it, just to see how much can be created when you have a team of mothers that want to create something special and have talent, patience and determination to see it through. And yeah guys, I guess that's about it, I hope you enjoyed this video, I'm sorry if I sound a bit weird, but I'm not recording this video at home, I am currently at my college dorms and it is also night time, so I can't be too loud. I wanted to bring you this video as soon as possible, so that's why I decided to record it here. I hope that my voice wasn't way too weird and I hope you didn't have any problems understanding what I said. Anyway, as always, I would like to thank Simon Anderson and all the other Patreons that supported me this month. If you want to donate or help me out, the link for my Patreon is in the description. Every single donation is appreciated and even if you donate only one dollar, it is more than enough. And yeah guys, once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, tell me what you think about it in the comments, subscribe for more Fallout and other games content and I will see you next time.